What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of E-Electric Productions. I'm Jay, and today we're going to be playing The Mummy Demastered, a game based off the recently released movie. And while the movie didn't do so hot in theaters, the game, on the other hand, for being as simplistic as it is, is actually pretty good. So let's jump right in here and take a look what we've got. We can select a file to start with. Now, I have played this, and I've played for about two hours. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, the story here is fairly forgettable. Uh, you are a special agent who works for this corporation that takes care of the supernatural and the mysterious. And you've got Russell Crowe's character from the movie here, who speaks to you through text. And uh, I usually end up kind of skipping through it. I've been reading it some, and overall, it's just... It's just okay. It's not great. Um, he just basically tells us here that we found this location. There's been some reports of mysterious activities. We should go check it out. We see our soldiers there, our teammates, squad mates. Uh, they're fallen. And so clearly something has gone down here that is less than savory. So as we make our way through, we're avoiding these little uh, alien-style egg sacs. And that's actually going to bring me my first point here. Uh, this game, <laughs> while I enjoy the game a lot, and I think it's a lot of fun, I'll say that right out of the gate, uh, it copies everything and that has been good <laughs> from 2D side-scrollers from the 90s, late 80s, and even from the 2000s. These egg sacs here remind me of the, uh, the eggs in Aliens. So we keep making our way through here. And... Uh-oh, we've got somebody showing up. It says, all will die. Very foreboding. And then here we go. Now, I have not made it out of this portion alive. I don't think you're supposed to. I'll just say that right up front here. Agent, come in. If you can hear this, get out. Things are going totally haywire. Thank you, I hadn't noticed. Um, I don't think the point is for you to survive this. Um, these little guys are going to drop from the ceiling. And then just the number of enemies that they throw at you here. And these guys can jump. And I'll actually try here. I don't think it's possible to survive this. But I'll actually try to survive it. Um, again... This is, is highly reminiscent of Metroid in the first, uh, in Super Metroid. You, oh no, I didn't see the little spider dude. The first mission, when you start off, you, you go in, you investigate, everything goes to hell in a handbasket, and the next thing you know, you're running for your life trying to get out of there back to your ship. Man, these dudes are everywhere. So I'm already at 50% health. Um, so while I like the game, and I really like what they're doing, um, I feel as though the whole point of this was simply to take everything that's been good about side-scrollers over the last 15-20 years, put it all together to promote their film. I got out alive. Okay, well, I stand corrected. First time, I must have just rushed way too quickly. So then they go into this little story here about, you know, with this um, comic book style um, graphics, and they just talk about the Prodigium exists just to defend the world from all of these, you know, blah, 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 men in black, you get it. So um, if you're looking for originality in this game, sadly, you're not going to really find it here. And that's... That's not the end of the world for me. If it's a really good game and it's made well and it's not very original, no, well, that's that's fine. I I'll still enjoy the game for what it has to offer. So now we go to the first real starting location where we actually get a map and everything else. And I'll go over the controls really fast here too. I guess I should have mentioned those. So one of the things that's kind of cool is, is you can hold the right trigger. I am playing this with the controller. I think it plays better with the controller. You can hold your right trigger and lock your character in place so that you can shoot. I can roll, um, and as of right now, that's about it. Now you do unlock different things in the game as you continue to progress, just like Metroid. And here's the thing that's really gonna, this is what's funny to me. 
Do you see the little red bobble there? Yeah, so you can save. Thank you, Russell Crowe. This looks just like the health, except the health in Metroid was purple, but it looked identical to this. They used the exact same health blobs. And of course, the whole thing has a very Castlevania feel to it as well. So they are definitely, I mean, just look at the locations. Like, I get it, it's the mummy, but these look like more like castles. And in the movie, they were in, um, I think they were in England. Um, I did see the movie. I'm not, not proud of it. <laughs> it. I, for one, actually enjoyed the movie. It's just a mindless action movie. Um, I do hear all the different things that the critics were saying about the movie, the problems that it had, and I acknowledge that the movie did have a lot of issues, but I didn't hate it. Um, I really didn't. Okay, so here's the main baddie. She's here again. She's saying leave, and then she draws her undead minions. And these guys kind of suck, because unlike Castlevania, when they come up out of the ground, it does not take them a couple of seconds to, like, get their bearings. They take much more damage to destroy, and uh, they will hurt you as soon as they come up out of the ground. Sometimes even mid-rising from the ground, they'll uh, they'll swipe at you, and they, they hit for some decent damage. And now we've got the grasshoppers. Um, so one of the things that one of the gripes that I'll levy against this game is the game doesn't have as much heart and soul as some of the other uh, 2D side-scrolling shooters that we grew to love uh, from the you know the days of Super NES and Sega Genesis. Um, and what I mean by that is those games had a certain something. I'm not going to save yet. We don't need to save yet. Those games had something. They had they had heart. They had charisma. And this game kind of lacks that. And that's one of the issues that you're going to have when you're copying somebody else's work and trying to um, make it something that, that is yours. A lot of times it's going to have a very copy, cut, and paste feel to it. And, and this game does have that sometimes. And while I enjoy the game, and it is fun, and maybe that's just because I haven't had a lot of good 2D side-scrolling shooters in a while to play. But while the game is fun... Oh, I knew that guy was going to get me fish are just ravenous little beasts. Um, but yeah, I haven't had a good uh, 2D side-scrolling like Metroidvania shooter in a little while now. Um, so I'm enjoying it just because it get, it's scratching an itch that I haven't had scratched in a while. Uh, but the problem is, is that it just doesn't feel it doesn't feel original. It doesn't it doesn't have its own it doesn't have heart. It, it just has good gameplay. Um, and is that enough for a game? It can be, especially if you've really been missing out on on that style of gameplay for a while. It can. It, it can still be enjoyable. Okay, we got our grenades. Um, actually, I think down here... Yep, there it is. We're going to go in there and grab the map. So you actually get access to map pieces so that you can see what, um, there we go. I can't really zoom into it, unfortunately, but they've put some waypoints on my map. My health is now full, and now it's not. <laughs> so you can see those, those pieces there crumble, and you'll learn to spot those pretty quickly. go nailed the jump and we'll make our way back once we came get away from me fish as far as the enemies are concerned they're fine uh, they're very serviceable some of them I really like some of them are annoying as they should be Uh, but they're but they're well done. They're well animated. Uh, they're fun. If anything, again, they just feel like a little soulless. Like these grasshoppers, they they do their job. They do the trick. Um, but I don't know. It's just weird. It's it's not something I can quite put my finger on. But at times, I just feel like, yep, you know, it's that whole been there, done that feel. Can I get that grenade? I sure can. Now these bats start to get really annoying in that they can fire at you. Uh, 
Um, I forget... Nope, still not gonna save yet. Oops, and I saved by accident. Saving's fine. It's pretty quick. Um... There's not a whole lot that can kill you early in this game, um, except for just really being careless. And, and I mean, I'm not even being that careful. I mean, you guys see, I'm just pretty much plowing through here. Um, but uh, you're, you're, you're pretty safe uh, up until a certain point. And, and my plan here is I'll play... Great, great job ducking there. <laughs> um, I will go ahead and play through... We're just going to move forward to the first boss. And we'll fight and defeat the first boss. And the game is not terribly long. Uh, from the research I've done... It can be beaten in um, a handful of hours, like four to six is the average, seems to be the average playtime. Let's see if we got some health. Oh, more grenades. It's fine, I'll take that. I'm actually going to try to venture back. Oh, and I failed miserably. I'm going to try to grab that big health blob. Oh, well. That's fine. No big deal. So you can see that it's got sort of the same samey feel as you move forward. And again, that's not it's not the end of the world. It's, it's, it's okay. Um, but uh, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh man, this is the new... Symphony of the Night Castlevania game. Because um, it's not. I mean... It kind of feels like it wants to be. But, uh... It's not. Okay, we'll keep making... Oh, man. These guys are fast. Let's see... Okay, yep. They don't want me to go there yet. Sometimes the key to this game is just patience. If you try to push ahead too quickly, you'll get yourself into trouble. And if you take your time a little bit and scope out your enemies, then you'll have no issues. Health? Grenade. That's fine. Here we go, we got the undead. Those birds' patterns are just erratic enough that they'll get you sometimes. I've never tried going this way. Is there anything up here? Oh, yeah. Okay. So those helicopters, in fact, we'll activate it now. It's fine. It's not a big deal. These helicopters are spread throughout the games, and they're fast travel points. So if you find one helicopter, you can travel back to an earlier helicopter. Or vice versa. Jump. Okay, so at this point, with that terrible fall that I just took, now my health's actually getting a little bit low, so I will hop on the map here. Okay, I see where we are. We kind of just did a big circle there. So I'm going to head straight down. I'll go in here. Let's see what's in this box here in case it's a big health blob. And it is. And then we will head down. map. Huh. It's the save location. Drag nab it. Then what's over? Because 
right around here somewhere, there's a special room that we need to get to. Is it? Oh, there it is. Should have checked my map. So, they've got special weapons in the game that you can unlock. Yes, thank you. We can figure out how to use our special weapon. Why switch is your special weapon? Um, you get a fair amount of ammunition for it, so while you're going to be probably tempted to want to save it, uh, I would encourage you to just use it as you so desire. Um, let's move away. No! You cannot swim underwater here in the beginning as you make your way through the game. That is an option that you will unlock later on. You can't go through these yet. Those steel uh, plates will not allow you to progress. Uh, so there's something down there that we clearly want to get to, but we can't get down there yet. So what we'll do is we're going to head up to the save point. We've got one more checkpoint to reach. Let's check here. Yes, we'll that's fine. We'll head over here to our save location, and we'll do a quick save. So the controls are perfect. They feel very smooth. Sometimes trying to stay in place, holding the right uh, trigger and fire at an angle, and then duck out of the way and everything else. Um, when you first start playing the game, you may find that it gets a little bit, um, a little bit frustrating sometimes to try to get all those movements down just perfectly. Uh, but if you give it time, sorry, but if you give it time, you'll get you'll get used to all the different nuances of the controls. Trying my best not to get hit by the giant grasshopper. There we go. Um, even shooting the lanterns, um, <laughs> that's that's straight straight from Castlevania, and it's like I don't know how to feel. It, is is this paying homage to those games? It would be if I think there was more like tongue in cheek. Like, hey guys, you know, remember Castlevania? Well, look, haha, we're doing that too. But it doesn't, but it doesn't feel that way. It feels like they're presenting this as like, hey, this is, look at our game, look what we made. Um, and that just feels a little cringy sometimes because it's like, yeah, all of this has been done before. But then again, what hasn't been done these days too? Sometimes that's, sometimes that's the question. All right, I need to be a little bit more careful here. One thing I would have liked to have seen in this game that is not present is I would have liked it if they had made a way for you to um, pull the screen down so that you could see what's below you. Alright, so I kind of messed up here. We've got to get over there. So let's see if I can utilize these platforms to get back up. Roll, roll, roll. There we go. This gives us our max health is increased, it's similar to an energy tank in Metroid or in Mega Man. Thank you very much. If you guys are interested in the story, by all means, go for it. Uh, watch the story. Like, get the game. Read. Oh no. I suck. Did I go over there yet? Yes, looks like I did. That's fine. So I think the easiest way here. Ah, screw it. We'll just go. We'll just go around the same way that we've gone already. Not a big deal. Okay, so I officially am doing terrible here. I apologize for that. Let's see if we can't use this section here to maybe refill our health just a little bit because we are headed towards the. Yep, that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to refill my health by getting shot in the face by bats. Turn around. So the the real question that I think 
needs to be answered here is, is this game worth $20? No, sadly it's not. I really like it. Um, I'm going to be playing through and beating this entire thing without a doubt. This is the kind of game that I love. Um, but at $20, that price point is a bit too steep. Um, which is a shame because I think it's a good game. It's just not worth $20. There's, there's not enough new original content here uh, to make it worth that purchase price. It does feel like a rehash of a lot of these games, which if you love these other games, then you may very much enjoy playing this and experiencing um, playing those games you love in a different form factor. <clears throat> but at the same time, it's, it's not going to win any awards here for originality, and for some people that's that takes a lot out of a game when it's when it's not original at all. Yes, yes, you sustain yourself on the living. And there we go. More of the living dead. Even even this, like these feel more like zombies than the characters that were in the movie and you know, if you look at your character's suit and then the zombies, it actually has more of a 2D Resident Evil feel <laughs> than it does the mummy. And that's what's so funny about this game. And yes, see, I love, look at that. That's just, that's beautiful. I, I really like what they've done with this game. I like the direction they took it in. I love the art style. This is from the movie. The Crashed Ambulance is from the movie. Um, it's not really a spoiler, just it's, it's present in the movie. So it's it's not that they have completely just made a game that is um, completely different from the movie. It's just that they made a game that includes just enough stuff to tie it to the movie and then is much more like all these other games that you've played in the past. Okay. Let's try to beat these birds. Then that gets us to this point here. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me take a look here. Yeah, that's fine. We'll head down this way and to the left. And we'll go ahead and save. So now that we've moved into the second area here, the first boss encounter is over here. And I'll try to quickly make my way. So the roll button is the same as... <clears throat> I'm so sorry. The roll button... <laughs> I won't roll, promise. Anyway, the roll button activates the save uh, save locations. If you hadn't picked up on that, because I did not feel the need to just save like five times, I know it takes after just one after one save. So we get some new we get some new enemies in here as well. Man, I am doing terrible. I'm trying to move quickly um, so that the video doesn't last forever, but in so doing. I'm doing really bad. Oh, actually, I'm glad that that happened. So, I do feel that some of the enemies are a bit too bullet spongy. They just, uh, this lets us carry more ammunition for our assault rifle that we picked up. Yeah, some of the enemies are too bullet spongy. Uh, they just, they last a lot longer than they should. Um, that could just be preferential on my part, but I don't like feeling like I'm having to sit there and, you know, put four or five magazines into an enemy for them to finally go down. And then over here you'll see that there are relics that can be collected and they're inside of these ammo crates that are that are laying around. I don't know what happens if you collect all 50. He says, great job, you're amazing, blah blah blah, typical video game tropes. And we'll go this way. These things here, it's debatable whether or not you want to actually destroy them because they drop a whole bunch of little spider creatures out. And honestly, if you just kind of shoot the little spiders as they come out, you can kind of make your way without having to deal with them too much. Because watch, I'll just go ahead and shoot this little spider guy. Every time I say, hey, I'll just do this <laughs> during this gameplay, it's just the opposite happens. Okay, we'll make our way up here. 
we're trying to avoid that. Here's our second piece of the map. It will open up our access to this area. And we've got our one waypoint there. Um, let's see, we're going to, let's see if we can keep going up. Now, just like any of the traditional uh, Metroidvanias, this game is got you locked out of certain areas, um, and that's locked behind getting new pieces of equipment that will give you abilities to unlock these areas. No, that's what I wanted to avoid. Oh, that's pretty cool. That spider fell and actually... Okay, my amusement is completely gone now. So we're going this way first. Okay, fair enough. So you can see the difference there for the assault rifle as I just switched to it. Destroys those guys pretty quickly. Which is nice to have. can't get over there yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and grab these grenades. Oh, yes, please. There's a save over here on my left. And we are most certainly going to make use of that. And then we're going to head into the boss fight on the right. I would have liked to have had a little bit more health, but... Actually, I'm going to try to farm a few of these crystals and these little spider creatures. I don't know why I keep accidentally hitting the save again. Sorry. Uh, but we're going to go over here. We're going to farm these guys for a second and see if we can't get a little bit more health. And I need to make sure that my ammunition is full as well. So what's my ammo at? I've got 113 rounds. I need to have as much of that as possible. Okay, so that's pretty much full. And once we bust... Uh, let's see here. Come on. Really? That's good enough. We're good. Let's do it. We head through this cool bone room. Let's turn on our assault rifle. So she, in the movie, as she continued to feed on people, she kind of restore herself. And same thing is happening here. That's that same creature that's been on the ground raising the undead. And for those of you who are arachnophobic, <laughs> I apologize. But yep, we get a giant spider creature. Whoa. The center there. I hate the acid. Unlike other games where once you take damage, that's what we needed. Um, unlike other games where once you take damage, you know, you're invulnerable there for a second. This game is not like that. When you fall in the acid, you're going to be taking constant, constant damage. some of these little bug creatures, which can give us health sometimes, too, which is nice. As you can see, the boss is not terribly difficult. I mean, it's, it's basic, except for those giant rocks that you can't dodge. It's 
Just basic pattern recognition. Um, she, and I don't know why I assume it's a she, but she speeds up. I'm not even going to move. Oh, yes, I am. Dagnabbit. <laughs> In my efforts to dodge, all I do is, like, suck up every single rock that hits me, or that comes out of the ceiling. All right, so there we go. And then we come over here, and we get our reward. And I'm not going to lie, this is embarrassing, but I tried everything with this. Even this feels so Castlevania-esque. I did not realize you had to shoot this thing. I was hitting all kinds of buttons and everything else. So we can cling to the ceiling now. Um, excellent work, blah, blah, blah. Very good. Because you can't get out of here normally. So then you come up here, and you can grab ceilings, and you can move across. So that's pretty cool. And of course, that opens up a whole bunch of new areas to you that you can explore. <clears throat> So there's a place um, where I discovered it on my first playthrough where there's a rope uh, leading down, but the rope hadn't been set up yet, so if you drop down, it just kills you immediately. And uh, he's just saying, hey, that area's been, been opened up now. So, And that's going to pretty much do it, guys, at this point. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop here. I we got to the first boss. You definitely have an idea of how the game works. Um, so, a quick rehash here, what do I think? I think it's a fantastic game. It's a lot of fun to play. It borrows from every single major property that's done a good, successful, side-scrolling, um, exploratory shooter. It's got elements of, for me, <laughs> Resident Evil, Metroidvania, Mega Man, <laughs> um, Castlevania. You know, it feels like all of these games have been, the developers sat down and they said, what makes a good side-scrolling, exploratory shooter? And then they just went through the checklist, and then once they finish that checklist, they're like, yeah, yeah, let's make that game. Which one? Yeah, all of them. Let's just <laughs> put them all together, put a couple of set pieces from the movie, and name it something clever. <laughs> and that's it. That's this game. Um, if that's a bad thing or not, depends more on you, on each individual person. I'm really enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. It feels like a trip back to my childhood. This feels like something I would have played on the Super Nintendo, and I'm enjoying it. It's it's fun enough to play that it merits me continuing to want to progress. Um, the boss encounter, again, it's a by the numbers, like, okay, we need a giant creature that has multiple attacks, that moves around, you know, and it just it feels very by the number, but I enjoy those numbers, and I'm enjoying this game. It's not worth $20. I think this is a $12 title. That's what I really think. They, they went way too high. Making it one-third of a AAA, eh, no, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say no to that. So what I would do is I'd throw this on your wish list. If this looks good to you, throw in your wish list, wait for it to go to 12 bucks and grab it then. Um, it's definitely worth eight, pretty much to anybody, I would say. 12 for people who really enjoy this style. And only if you are the most hardcore of Metroidvania fans, would you uh, want to pick this up for 20 So, that's going to do it for me today, guys. If you want to see me play more of this, let me know in the comments section below. And I look forward to seeing all of you on the next episode of E-Electric Productions. Game on, everyone! <laughs>